Last night was pretty interesting because uh, Diane and I, you know, we wanted to relax for a little bit, so we went downstairs in the hot tub. And uh, when we were getting out, there was this uh, family. It was like a mom and her three kids. three kids. Well, two kids and one of the girl's boyfriends. Yeah. And the girl, the girl, and I think she was supposed to have been about 25 that was trying out. She's trying out for The Voice. I guess there's auditions that are going on here for The Voice. Yeah, and there's people from all over this western section that have come here and is trying out this morning for The Voice. Oh, wow. So you could tell they kind of, they were very friendly and they didn't have anybody else to talk to so they were kind of like asking Diane to, and I to just kind of stay down there and talk with them right. and that. And Diane, you know, Diane loves to sing so you know, Diane was, was asking the boy like, hey, do you know this song and let's sing it and do you know that song because he had a guitar. And so, you know, we were singing and we got the girl who's auditioning, we got her to sing, and, and then there's the mom. Uh, the mom is extremely funny. Uh, she's had a couple to drink. Yep. So, you know, it, it, was, it was just, it was really funny getting to meet them. And we were all kind of sitting, talking around and introducing ourselves and, you know, just telling about different things. And all of a sudden, the mom looks at me <laughs> and she goes, who are you? <laughs> and I, I was kind of taken back a little bit. Like, huh? She goes, there's some, who are you? And then it realized, I picked it up, because everything that I was talking about yesterday, about our true identity and how we put labels on things, those things start coming and start flooding in your head. It's like, who am I? Well, I could tell her I'm this, and I can tell her, you know, I, you know, I'm a manager of a staffing company. I can tell her, you know, I'm a mom. I can tell her, you know, why I moved here. I could tell her all these different things, but they're just labels. Mm -hmm. And it finally, it just kind of like, it doesn't matter, like I said, how much you think that you know or you are there. It don't, because those old things just start coming back up, and it was just really, when she said that, I just realized, oh, I, I could say all kinds of different things. Who am I? And then all of a sudden, I just got back and I looked at her and I said, I'm life. And of course, she just kind of like looked at me like, you're freaking nuts. <laughs> you know, like, what? what? And the daughter, you know, she's kind of close. She goes, yeah, I get it. Yeah, your life. You know, which I don't know if she did or not, but it was just, it's just the way that we refer to ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I just got to thinking of that because we talked about that yesterday and I'm thinking, yeah, you know, why is it so hard for us to say that we're life? How many times have you looked in the mirror and just looked at that mirror and said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life? Mm -hmm. How many times have you done that? Or do you feel like I can't do that? But that's what you are, your life. You know, and we, and we need to take the labels off of ourselves. You know, we give label to something, like we said yesterday, so that the phantom man can have judgment. Hmm. And justification, both. And so we give a label to it, um, again, so it can have judgment, so we can either agree with it, or we can disagree with it. Because there for a minute, just for a fleeting minute, that thought, well, if I say the wrong thing, maybe she's not gonna like me. Or if I do, maybe she will. Which, you know, most of the time, eh, I could care less. <laughs> but it's like, you kinda choose like, what do you say when someone is, who are you? Because if I, I'm saying that to who are you? Mm -hmm. And I know in your head, there's going all different kinds of things. You know, we talked about kind of flipping the slitch, a switch and maybe seeing um, things a different way. And that maybe life wasn't living within these bodies, but maybe it was rather that life is living uncontained through these bodies. And there's a difference. I always like to differentiate between within and through. And we'll get to that in a little bit.
Because how can something that is all, and when I'm talking about is all, we can't understand what all is. Because if I say what is all, well, we don't, we don't know what all is because we've never experienced what all is. We've never seen what all is. So up here, we're, we're not going to know what all is. I don't know what all is. There's things out there that I don't even have a clue that's out there. I mean, they just found some dinosaur type thing that we didn't know was out there until they dug it up and we saw it. So we don't know what all is. We can't comprehend what all is, but that's what life is. It's all. So all is, is unrestricted and it's uncontained. And so within means that it's, it's contained, it, it's restricted. And so life can't be within something, but it works through. True life is totally void, totally void of any knowledge of separation. You know, true life doesn't know that there is any such thing as another. Doesn't know that there's another. You know, that's why I like, you know, Mike and Gary and all of them says, there are no others. Well, there isn't, because there's only that one life. It doesn't know anybody else. You know, Bruce always talks about, you gotta know that person that you're seeing as yourself, because it is yourself, because <coughs> there are no others. Life doesn't know anything other. True life is totally void of any knowledge of good and evil or any opposites of any kind. We talked about that yesterday, that because life is complete and it's total and it's entire, it's not going to know any lack, but because it doesn't know any lack, it's not going to know what abundance is. I mean, we, because we've judged, and each one is different. Somebody that has a million, you know, that is maybe down to their last million, and they were, you know, had 565 million, they think they're lacking. Mm -hmm. Where somebody who has, you know, maybe they have $10,000 to their name, and, you know, they get a million, they think they have abundance. It's all what you've judged it. And so, if you don't know, if you're entire, and it's totally full, you don't know what lack is, you're not going to know what abundance is. If you have um, sickness, you know, life is complete. It, it doesn't know any kind of sickness. It doesn't know anything like that. But it all, So then it's not going to know health. So it doesn't operate in that land of good and evil and have that fruit. It only operates in itself, in life, in knowing, in total entirety. That's how it operates. I mean, that's what complete means. It means total. It means, you know, entire. Um, I've read one good translation of it. Um, it was kind of void, void of, of um, void of like any separation of itself was a good explanation. It's void of any separation of itself. It can't separate itself. It's total. It's entire. And I think a lot of times when we think of oneness, we think that it's, you know, totally, it's separated itself, that this life is separating itself, but it's not. It is entire, and it's not, it, there's no separation of any kind. Even though, you know, I'm sitting here and you're sitting there, a life is still complete. Not, it's not separated of, at any kind because it's life that what is what everything is in. We talked about how this realm is real. It's, I'm sitting in a chair, so you know this chair is real. But appearances are in this realm. In this realm, and we talked about that there is a big difference between the appearances of reality, and truth. This all out here is subject to change all the time. It's going to change all the time. This is where the phantom man thinks that truth is at. And that's what he tries to tell you through your fall, through your thoughts, that this is all truth. Mm -hmm. But it's not truth. 
It can be a reality, what you're experiencing through the appearances, but it's not truth. There is a difference between that and between the reality that you see and truth. This reality out here can change. Truth can never, ever change. Um, you know, I mean, like I said, things can change in an instance. You can be driving in a car and, and cross over and get in an accident, and for a while your circumstances are going to change. I mean, I've had that happen to me, and I, you know, I had to go through a whole bunch of things with the insurance company, and appearances looked kind of bad because the girl was not admitting fault, and I wasn't going to be able to get a car, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? And so the appearances were subject to change, but the truth of who I was, that I was entire and, and, and complete, that was the truth, but that didn't change, even though out here I couldn't see the appearance of it. You know, truth by its own definition can never, ever change. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. We talked about that yesterday. But he said all three, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. Because they're all the same thing. Yeah. The truth is the way, the way is the life, you know, and that's the way it is. When Jesus said that, I mean, he had no problem. I mean, he could just spit that, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. And people were looking at him. You're the, you're, you're the truth, you're the way, well, what does that mean? You know, oh, you, again, they were looking at the appearance realm, thinking that somehow this man, okay, was the truth, and, and they built this whole thing around mm -hmm. that they were going to, he was, he was going to be some sacrifice to appease an angry God. First of all, I could never understand that. You're telling me God is love in one way and then you're going to tell me that he's angry and you've got to do something. I couldn't understand that. So I knew that couldn't be right. I had enough things in that that I knew that that wasn't right. But they built that whole thing around a man. Because they talk about how his flesh was, you know, beaten for this and his blood was the sacrifice for this and because it was all based on that image of what they saw. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rather than really knowing what he said is, I'm the life, not this, but what I truly am as the life. And when Jesus was talking, he was always talking not about himself, but he was talking about you. Always. So when he's saying, I'm the truth, the way, and the life, you should be looking in the mirror every day saying, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. The appearance realm is always going to need to be changed because that's where the phantom man sits on his throne of judgment. And that's where he determines what's good and evil. As we said yesterday, everybody has their own definition of good and evil. And you know what? Our definitions change. I mean, before, how many of you, when you were in religion, thought maybe smoking or drinking or something like that was evil? And then you kind of realized it and go, it's not evil. So our determination of what's good and evil changes. Because it's based on our appearances. And then we realize Okay, maybe it's, we'll change that. Maybe it's not good. Maybe it's not evil. But what you're not understanding is it doesn't matter about drinking or smoking. What matters is the truth of who you are. The drinking and the smoking is just an appearance. Mm -hmm. And you've judged it that it's evil or that it's good, but it doesn't matter because it's not truth. Mm -hmm. You're drinking, you're smoking, whatever can change. You can drink, you can not drink. You can smoke, you can not smoke. You've changed it. But the truth of who you are doesn't change no matter what you do. No matter what this body does, it doesn't change the truth. The phantom man is in all his glory because he gets to do something if he sits on the throne of good and evil. If, there, if he judges the appearance as bad, like I said, he gets to do what he thinks to change it. He either gets to pray, he either gets to fast, you know, he, he either, you know, somehow just do something in this natural realm to change it. And then if he judges them in good, you spend your life trying to do the same thing 
over and over again so that you're gonna keep getting those good results. And sometimes you do, but you know what? I was never, I don't say lucky enough for that to happen all the time, okay? Sometimes I'd hit, sometimes I'd miss, and you know what? I didn't like that because I was living like this. One day I'm up and it's really good and good, and the next day it was down, it was really, really bad. You know, I'm like, but I'm doing the exact same thing. Why isn't it working? Because I'm, I'm looking at the appearances, judging them all the time. You know, Mike's, again, like I said, we talked about the little story of the little, of the little boy that was uh, doing meatballs. And how the little boy said, oh, life is happening while we're making the meatballs. And yeah, life is happening while we're making the meatballs. Mm -hmm. But the making of the meatballs is not life. So I'm hoping you're following me. Life is happening while you're making the meatballs. Okay. Or you can just put anything. But that, that's what that little boy said. Things are happening. Okay. Like he's making the meatballs. Life's happening. But the making of the meatballs isn't life. There's a difference. It's life that's happening, but it's not life. There's a difference in the substance of what it is. And I'll get to that in a little bit. I had to get to a point, and just for me, that what I saw was not life. And as long as I kept looking at what I saw, I was always going to judge it. Every time something come to, would come at me, I you know, every appearance, I would either, that's good, that's bad, you know, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. Mm -hmm. You don't. It's just so, it's just the natural thing that the phantom man does. I mean, something would come, a thought would pop in my head, and I'd either judge it good, and then I'd do what I thought I needed to do based on that thought. And the thing that I didn't know is that it was constantly reinforcing that phantom man because the phantom <laughs> man constantly needs to do something. Mm -hmm. He's always that do, do, do. Why do you think religion really is popular? Because you get to do something. Even though you think you don't want to do it, the phantom man wants you to do it because it keeps him alive. That's why it's so popular. Even, even religions that don't call themselves a religion, you still got to do something. There isn't one, I, there isn't one religion, and I've studied a lot of them, that you don't have to do something. Even if it's just getting quiet and trying to look from within, which I tried because it was still all about me getting quiet. It was something that I had to do. It was only when I gave up the thought that life was not appearances happening around me but just knew that life was the all and complete. And it didn't need to be what I determined was complete, just knowing that it was complete and that it was who I was. That's when peace came. It's when I gave up the thought of judging these appearances, of judging everything that I see with these natural eyes, you know, as good and evil, and just knew that it was life, that I'm life and complete. That's only when it brought peace, that I didn't have to do anything. But this life is complete. That's when peace came. And all judgment then would leave in an instance. We were having dinner. Um, my husband and I we were having dinner with his sister who had just moved to Austin. And, you know, she said, let's go to this cute little coffee shop. Well, we had never been to it before. So I'm like, okay, let's go to the coffee shop. So I always have a habit of putting my purse on the back of the chair. And I had one of these chairs where you just kind of like clipped it. It didn't have a zipper. So I just had it. It just had like one of those uh, magnet type things that you... A purse. Yeah, it's a purse and you just do it. So I put it down here, but it's kind of like that. But then you've got the two little 
things that are kind of open. Well, like that, it's got the two little things that are open where somebody can easily stick their hand down yep. and grab your wallet and pull it out, yep. which I didn't know. So I'm, you know, we had coffee, stayed there for a couple while, I go to work the next day, oh, I need gas. I go to the gas station, I reach into my purse to get my wallet and it's not there. So I, and I'm like, oh my gosh, where's my wallet? You know, wh what happened to it? So you know, I'm thinking, okay, just, it could be anywhere. So just calm down. <laughs> so I called my office and said, hey, did I take out my wallet? Because I have a habit of taking out my wallet. You know, sometimes, okay, you know, if my boss listens to this, yes, sometimes on the internet and I'm buying things. So sometimes I take out my wallet <laughs> and I get online and I buy things, okay? So I thought maybe I left my wallet on the table. So I called. Hey, is my wallet on the table? No. I'm like, oh, okay. So I get in my car, I thought, you know what, I probably left it on the kitchen table because I do the same thing. You know what I'm going to pack for the day, I unpack my purse and then I put things, I probably laid it on the table and I'm, oh, it's probably back. So I went home, went looking on the table. Okay, it wasn't there. Okay, now it's time to panic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cannot find my wallet. So I thought, okay, I better check something. I went in, I checked my account. $900 out of my account was gone. I mean, they were wiping everything out. There was $3,000 on my credit card. I called my credit card company. There was $3,000 on my credit card. I'm like, oh my gosh. So, you know, I'm, I'm like, ugh. So I'm fumbling trying you know, to call them to let, to, to let them know. And, you know, it, what's funny is when you go through that, it's, yes, it all these thoughts come into your head. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had thoughts you're like, oh my gosh, all the money's gone out of my account. Okay, now the house payment's gonna pop. Now they're gonna, now I'm gonna be, we're gonna be put out on the street. Now we're gonna be living in our car. I mean, <laughs> you know how the mind, just yeah. all these things just, starts to come, you know, through your head. I mean, I was, I was like, oh my gosh. And the funny thing is like, you think this is, this is true. This is what's going to happen. You know, you really think, oh my gosh, th this is going to happen. I mean, so I wanted to change these circumstances. Okay. Cause I wanted, I wanted all my money back right away. You know, I wanted, everything you know off my credit card i wanted to get my license they had my license they knew where i lived yeah. you know you almost feel violated and and so things come in your head <laughs> i mean i had them coming in the middle of the night in the house they know where i live they're going to take everything i mean these are the thoughts that come into your head i mean literally i had our whole life just totally turned upside down within five minutes <laughs> of thinking okay it was fun exactly i had it right up here and it's like okay no, 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 no. The problem that I realized is that, yes, this event is real, but it's not truth. Yeah. And that, that was hard for me to kind of learn, but it was like I latched onto this truth and thought, then it was happening to me. Okay, this truth that, you know, we're going to be put on the street and this people are going to find us and you know who knows they're going to come in and rob everything and it's going to happen to <coughs> me okay exalted that phantom man there's a me there's a me this is going to happen to all this that i thought was true was going to happen to a me and so then the phantom took two con it took total control i mean i suffered for two days with these thoughts you know mike said that that the suffering is an alarm clock warning that you're attaching a wrong thought to something and he's right i was attaching all these thoughts that something was going to happen to a me and it brings fear because that's what the phantom man has to live on is fear Because if he doesn't have that, he doesn't have a reason to exist. He doesn't have a reason to try to control and call all the shots. See, if you're in fear, 
your fan, the, your phantom man, the, the person you think you are, is comes in full force. Well, I need to do this, and I need to do this, and I need to do this, and he gets to call all the shots. And he reigns in full control. It's not life, because life, the truth of you, life knows that it's complete. Life can just rest back and just know that, hey, you know what? Things will, things will happen. And life, life knows how to do what it needs to do. But see, the phantom man doesn't want, doesn't want that to happen because the phantom man wants to be in control. I mean, my phantom man wanted to be in control. I need to do this. I need to call. I need to go to the police. I, you know, now I need to make sure that um, we change all the locks and we need to do all this stuff. It was just reigning in full control to try to expel that fear when life wouldn't have told me that. Life might have, life would have given me some directions that would have been perfect. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't have been like a f based on fear. I mean, we did all this stuff, and you know, the police finally said, you know what? It was just a bunch of kids. They needed some money because they went to Target and they went to Whole Foods, and they were buying stuff yeah. for the big UT game. Uh, <laughs> at Whole Foods. Well, Whole Foods is big in Austin. That's where it started. So it's like you, you the you, the Whole Foods in Austin is like the mecca. I mean, it is it is. It, it is in full bloom. I've never been to a grocery store. It's literally like three, three, three floors, and they have an escalator, and they have underground parking. It's amazing. And then they have some little shoots about it, but yeah. But that's all it was. But yeah, my mind, I, you know, I had the cartel coming in and, you know, taking everything we, we own or something. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was... But see, my phantom man was doing all these things. And you know what? It cost me more money trying to do the stuff that I, I thought I needed to do than if I just would have just let life <coughs> act the way it should ha act. And that's hard. And, and I'll get to that because I don't want to kind of get, get, get ahead of myself, but it's... Life knows what to do. When you know who you are, it knows how to work through you, and it will do what it needs to do. And it won't be a thought process. I've talked to my friend Phyllis about this, and it's, it's really hard, but there are times, have you ever done something that you've never, you've never had to think about what you're doing? Usually. But I mean, it's not a thought. You just automatically do it, and then you turn around and go, why did I do that? But it was the thing to do. Yeah. I thought, I don't know why I did that, but gosh, it turned out because that's what life was. Life was doing it. You, the, the whole thought process of the phantom man was totally out of the equation. It was life working through you, through these bodies. It was life doing that, not the phantom man having to figure out to do something. And that's freedom. That's freedom when you allow life to just work through you, through these bodies. And the only way you can do that is to know that's your true identity, to know that's who you are. Total and complete. You know, it was when I stopped latching on to those thoughts, finally after two days, I'm like, what the heck am I, you know, what, what am I doing here? It's like, no. I mean, I just was like, you know what, thoughts would come in and I just, you know, it's life. I'm life. <laughs> That's the truth of it. It's life. I'm life and it's total and complete. And then, like I said, the police came and just said, uh, you know what, it was just a bunch of kids. We got, you know, on camera and, and they were just trying to get things for the UT game. It's like. So what kind of poem came out of that? Just give us some writing poems. <laughs> I'll read your poem after. Okay. I got, I got a poem for you. You know, li like I said, life was able then to work and move through this body and do what it needed to do. You know, Mike said you don't need to suffer. That's true. I did not need to suffer for those two days. Gave me some great material and I learned a lot more, but I didn't need to do it. 
because the truth of my being was life. And I laid that down. I laid down my true identity. But Jesus asked us to lay down the false identity. It's like, lay down your life. And he's, not, he's talking about this man that you think you are. Lay it down, crucify it. It's not who you are. You are life. And it's, it's the same. It's, you know, when I'm talking to you, I'm, I'm looking at the fact that, you know what, life is speaking through these, this mouth and life is hearing through the ears. Now, the thoughts that you have, you know what? I don't even think about that. You know what? I'm just, I'm just speaking through life, and I know that life is, is listening through your ears. So that's why it's kind of like, I don't have to try to convince you of anything. And I don't want to convince you of anything. I, you know, I'm just, I'm just, life's just speaking life <laughs> to that life. I really saw that the mind of the phantom, that the mind, I guess I'll say it this way, I really saw that the mind was the phantom's playground. I mean, the mind is like Disney World. It really is, because boy, once you get on the, that ride, it is, it just whips you around and whips you around and you can't get off. It was the hardest thing for me to get off. And all the while, man, this phantom man, is he's just like pushing that lever, making it go faster and faster and faster. And it was just, you know, finally it's like, no, stop. I want to get off. And you have to get to a point where you just say, you know what? I want to get off. I want to get off this ride. Not doing it anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off this ride. That's why there's no truth in our judgment of good and evil. There's no truth in our judgment of good and evil. Now, remember I said, truth can never change. Our judgment of good and evil can change. So that's why there's no truth in our judgment of good and evil, because it can change. And it's, it's our judgment. It's the phantom man's judgment. And you know what? Each one of us judges things differently. And... But there's no truth to it. There is no truth to this judgment because, how do I put it? But there is not truth in our judgment of good and evil because the fruit is from a different tree. There's a tree of life, which is truth. Remember we said, Jesus said, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. The truth and life are the same. So it's from the same tree, it's a fruit, the fruit's the same. Where good and evil is not truth, it's a different tree. And there's only truth in righteous judgment, which comes from the tree of life. And really, righteous judgment isn't judgment at all. You know what righteous judgment is? All it is is knowing who you are. That's all righteous judgment is. I mean, we want to make righteous, oh, judge righteously. It's this great big thing. No, it isn't. It's knowing who you are. That's all it is. Righteous judgment is knowing who you are. So then life, which is the truth of who you are and not the appearances, is not contained within these bodies but it's rather that these bodies are in life and this life that you are flows uncontained. So life does not live within us, but life does live through us. There's a difference. It doesn't live within us, it lives through. There's a big difference. If I have a window, okay, there's a window over there, you're looking through it, okay? But I don't have to dwell inside of it to see. I just, I look through, it's, it's passing. It's from one side to the other, or a door, you go through it. But I'm not dwelling within the door. 
See what I'm saying? I, I'm not living inside the door, but I'm passing through it because I'm constantly moving. That's how life is. It's constantly moving all the time, and it's moving, it's moving through these bodies. It's not just sitting here dwelling with one. It's moving, doing its thing all the time. I mean, you don't, we can't see that in this realm, but in the realm of life, it's, move, it's moving constantly through us, through these bodies. And you know what? When it doesn't need to move anymore, okay. Then life just goes and the body falls. But see, we look at this as us. You know? But that's not it. These bodies were just meant for, the, for life to move through. It's life never stands still. You know, I said yesterday that if, um, you know, if we kind of think that it's within, it's, it, there's, then it has something to do with us. And, I, you know, I remember I would just try to sit quietly. Sometimes I think I'm a little ADD because I always have to be on the go and all the move. And to get me and sit quietly, it's just like, okay, I've got to sit quietly. I've just got to kind of listen and just see, you know, just see if I'm, I'm doing this right. So, you know, I would always do that on the airplane. You know, like I told, airplanes are... They were kind of like my nemesis. I really didn't like to fly. So I'd always try to get close. Is this plane going to be okay? I got to pray over it, but is this plane going to be okay? I got I to have this piece that, is this plane going to be okay? Is it, so I would sit quietly, you know, and I, and I would just kind of like, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> you know, and it would just, it would frustrate me. Because here I am trying to listen because everybody says you should be able to hear and listen and that. And I couldn't do it. Uh -huh. I know, it's very frustrating. And I couldn't do it. <laughs> and it's just like, fuck. But, it be but I became the focus. I need to do this. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's why you can't just hear and let life do it because the focus then is that phantom man. It's, it's a me. I got to do something. My focus was on me instead of just life and letting life yeah. flow and do what it needs to do. And when I got out of the way and finally got the thoughts out, I, I began to see things that unfold. I was just like, wow, that I never would have thought in a million years. I'm like, I could have thought up a plan and it never would have been good if I, when I just got out of the way, didn't think anything of it. I would do things I didn't even know I was doing. I'm like, like I said, I would say, why did I do that? But it was perfect because it was life living through me, doing, doing it, not me, not me sticking to a plan. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you, I used to think, oh, the kingdom of heaven, it's within here. You know, you know, you always think of that. But then I know that Jesus said I was the truth, the way, and the life. And that's who I really was. So if I was the truth and I was the way and I was the life, then the kingdom of heaven is within life. Mm -hmm. That's the you he's talking about. The kingdom of heaven is within life. He's not talking about you in this like little, little body. It's within life, which is really you, which is moving through you all the time, which is moving through your body all the time. And it knows what to do. You know, life appears through this body and mind and projects things out in an appearance realm. But it's not the substance of what it really is. I think that's what tr I'm trying to get through is is it's not the substance of what it really is. I was talking to hubby today and I was FaceTiming. But what I saw was a picture, okay? But it wasn't the substance of who he was. Okay, and it's the same thing with life. Life can project the appearances by moving through this body into this realm, but it's not the substance of it. Like that little boy, the making of the meatballs, you know, life was happening, but it wasn't the substance. It wasn't the life itself. See, we have a tendency to think these things, this, these appearances, 
are the substance and it's not. It's not the life itself. Life can appear and it does through this, but it's not, it's not, it's not the life. That's what we have to know. It's not the substance. What is the substance? The truth of our being. That's the substance. That's the truth. And that's who we are. I got a little poem that I'll read. Why is it so hard for us to believe? There's nothing in this world we need to achieve. No struggling or toiling by the sweat of our brow. No living by appearances or our minds know how. These thoughts in our head surely can't be random. Lies entertained, encouraged by the phantom. The truth of our being is not a God who rules and reigns. It's the light of eternal life no words can explain. This mortal man cannot begin to comprehend. The life that we are has no beginning nor end. We have exalted death, tried to plan our escape, prayed to our God to change the landscape. This God we have thought could deliver and save is really the phantom to whom we're a slave. This human man who demands to be on high disguises himself as a god in the sky. We pray for this world that we constantly judge, wondering why the prayers we pray don't seem to budge. Changing evil to good, it's the way, it's changing evil to good, it's what we try to achieve. The phantom is God, or so it believes. Stop living this life of appearances realm, where control is God that steers the helm. To live by righteous judgment is not that bizarre. It's to be the life that we already are. So that is what, hopefully I've kind of given you a picture of like, <coughs> Stop thinking that this persona, and it's hard because like I said, we have memories. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love it when Mike says, if we could wipe out your memory, you wouldn't have anything to judge by, and it's true. <laughs> you know, we talked yesterday how, you know, we have this persona from words that we've grown up and experiences and judge, and it's created us to judge things and, and that this is good for us and this is bad for us, and it's shaped our personalities. and. We think that's who we are. That's who we are. And, that, and that's what's going to, you know, that's what's going to live forever, either good or bad, when that's not true. That's not truth. That's not who you are. Thank goodness when, you know, life doesn't want to work through this body anymore, you lay that down, all the thoughts and all the memories and all that go with it. And what's left is the life that you are that never ends, there's no beginning, there's no end to it.